Hey, this is Jackie from Plaid Foundry. By the way, that's me on the one on the left laughing. <laughs> that's my sister Molly on the right. So we are here today because you have downloaded and gotten one of our 22 one sheet templates. That's so awesome. Thank you. So now we're going to walk through the steps so you can become an ace designer in Canva. Okay, let's get to it. Before we start though, just a little reminder, you want to use an internet browser on your desktop or laptop like Google Chrome or Safari and not Canva's mobile app, which is great, but it's really better for quick fixes on the go. So <clears throat> we're in an internet browser right now. What we're going to do is you're going to click on the link from our email and a preview of the templates will open on Canva's website just like this, canva.com. Now you're going to click on the purple use this template button. It's at the bottom center and it'll load it into your Canva account. Now you'll be prompted to sign into Canva or get an account, but in this example, we're already signed up and signed in. So next, the template loads as though you will edit it and you'll see every single page we have in the project, all 22 of them. <clears throat> now if you exit off this window, you'll just wanna go to canva.com and click the, the shared with you um, button. It's on the left sidebar and then you'll click on the template. You'll use this template and it'll say make a copy. So once you click that button, the title will automatically change to copy of and whatever the title formerly was. <laughs> One nice note, as long as you have access to the internet, everything is gonna auto save in your Canva account on canva.com. Okay, so let's now just take a tour of the editor. Now that you're opening the project, the four things you're going to be focusing on is text, images, colors, and fonts. The top horizontal perimeter of the, of the screen you see is from left to right. We'll just start there. It has the buttons font, size, color, italics, bold. It's where you can also justify left, center, right, different spacing. You're going to have effects and transparency too. You can link a layer um, as you move to the right there, yep. Then, then then, the other buttons, you can see if you just hover over them, they're gonna, with your cursor, it'll, it'll show up what they are. Okay, so back at the left is a vertical dark gray sidebar and it has all your uploads where you can drag in and upload photos, that kind of thing, logos, and you can always hide it too. You can make room for it by just clicking on that arrow. So one great button to keep in mind is the back button up there on the top left. In case you make a mistake, like I often do, <laughs> we can use that arrow on the top left. But I also am a much bigger fan of the Control or Command Z. So either one's going to be a good um, backspace kind of undo button. One of the last buttons on the editor in Canva will be the zoom in and zoom out features. That's going to be on the bottom right corner. You can use the slider, or you can see all the pages side by side, sort of in a grid view. Or you can click, and you can see the little 22 on the bottom. That's going to show you all of our, our templates in this set. So for us right now, we're going to use page 9, though. So why don't we open up that and get to editing. Let's start at the top, work our way down. First is the name and the headline. If you have a logo, just delete the text box. Otherwise, just type in your headline or topic. Click the layer and type in the text box provided and then click and paste in your summary and just kind of move down the page to the different text boxes. The about me section, the different takeaways, benefits, key points, and basically any other text box you see where it says like website.com or username. If you're not using them, again, just delete them. So text can be resized by just clicking the box and then pressing the plus or minus buttons. That'll decrease or increase the size and one little tip though, we don't suggest that you move the little white lines on the side there because that'll end up just kind of moving the entire box, which can be a little frustrating. 
But again, if it happens, just click on that undo button up there and it'll go back to where it belongs. And yeah, there's little grids, you can line them up. That's, that's certainly always gonna show up too. Um, an easier way if you wanna just move it a little bit is to just select the text box and then use your arrow keys up and down, left and right. That's usually a lot easier. So we'll end with our, our example with testimonials. If you don't happen to have two or you don't have any, then you can just delete that layer and it'll leave more room for other text or images or whatever you need. So totally customizable, editable, deletable, no big deal. So now we'll move on to the images. It's all drag and drop, which makes this part super fast and easy. Um, first, you're gonna wanna find and upload your images or your logo files and drag them into the boxes. So the goal here is to kind of replace anything you see with clouds or sky or that little green valley there. And anything like that is gonna need to be replaced or deleted because you don't wanna leave those in there. Um, yeah, anywhere you see our face, you wanna put your face. And there's plenty of stock photos you can find. Um, sometimes they're free. You can go to like Pexels and that's usually easy to find if you don't have too many images of yourself for background images. But, yep, there you go. You're just dragging and dropping right in the box. If you want to resize it, even though it automatically does it, usually it's pretty spot on, but you can manually adjust the photo by double clicking and dragging your cursor out or up or down to adjust the image where it's placed into the frame that we provided. So for logos, whether you're putting it up top or, or anywhere like in that as seen on section, let's say you want to put past clients there, that sort of thing, you'll want to click on the picture in your upload section and then it'll pop onto the page just randomly. That's, that's totally normal, but you want to resize it and reposition it wherever it ends up. It's supposed to just show up. You don't want to necessarily drag the photos like we did with the regular um, like profile images because once it gets into the tiny little boxes, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't resize right. The photos, for some reason, I'm not sure why it's logos, but logos, just let it pop itself in and then put it where you want to put it. Here's the arrow keys, yay. So another logo, it just kind of popped itself in. We're gonna resize it, put it wherever we please. One of the cool parts of Canva, I think, is the transparency. It's a really neat um, aspect and feature and changing it makes it feel super custom and, and unique instead of just a background color or just a regular image. Um, it can really make another image pop. Uh, the other elements. So to do that, you just kind of click on the photo layer, go up to the top right, and drag a couple buttons. We call it a, some call it opacity or transparency is what we tend to say. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You can just adjust it as you see fit. So now that we got all the main elements in, we want to make sure that's working together. Once you have all your text and images, just take a look around what colors you might want to change, font sizes you might want to alter, experiment. We mentioned before about making things linkable, which is one of the main aspects of your one sheet. So to do this and make active links and, and make your web addresses uh, clickable, just click on the layer or text box or image or video button and click on this button right here that's with the, the little chain link button. Then you're gonna wanna type in the website, YouTube, Vimeo channel, your, whatever your sizzle or highlight reel um, embed link is, and you're gonna paste it right in there. So on the video button, you can also drag a screenshot in or make a little image of your video like a thumbnail or a screenshot of your video. People will still wanna um, see that it's an action shot, so it tends to be really helpful if it looks like one. Because we never know what people are going to click on. They might click on the click to play, they might click on the little play triangle. Just make sure they're both clickable. That's really nice is it underlines. So people can see that it's, this is a link, this is a hyperlink. You're, it's a, just an optional thing. You don't have to do it, but people, it's like a subliminal thing. People tend to think it's um, underlinable, it's underlined and it's clickable. 
So if you're happy with the final version, just go to the top right and press download. Then you're going to want to select the file type PDF and save it to your computer. On the box it says select pages, uncheck all the other pages and check only the one page, that's our page 9, and you'll want to save or, or else you're going to get all 22 of them in a zip folder, which is super not good. <laughs> so you just want to click done, the purple download button, and you'll wait for it to render for a few seconds, and it'll save in your downloads folder. Then you're going to want to look for the file on your computer and check it, open it. That'll give you a chance to proofread, look for any mistakes, and check the links. So click on the links and make sure they're working. It should open up in a new tab or a window. And if they're wrong or not working, then just go back to the previous section and uh, properly link the web addresses. And maybe you've made an update or you want to replace this. It's super easy. You just go and replace the link whenever you, uh, whenever you need to. So you've got your final version and you've saved it, you've downloaded it, you've checked it, you're happy. Just one little quick tip though before we go. Once you've downloaded it um, and saved it, you might have version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or final, whatever you want to call it. Just make sure that wherever you're saving on your computer, it's the only newest copy that you have. Otherwise, if you need it at a moment's notice to attach to send to a, a booking agent, you'll you won't have you'll need to have the best version, the most accurate one, with the one without all the typos and mistakes. So name it and save it in a safe place and make sure it's the only one you have. Nice job! So that's the final step we have for your customizing your one sheet. But and we want to encourage you to experiment and have fun. It's been fun, guys. Thanks. Happy creating!